In this video, we're going to show you how, by adding waypoints to a router track in Garmin's Basecamp software, you can see them in a function on your GPS device called Active Route. And what's really nice about that feature, when you turn on Active Route on your compatible GPS device and you're following your router track, you can see how far away, distance wise, points are that you've marked within the route as waypoints. A good example could be you're doing an organised event and they've sent you some areas where there's going to be checkpoints, it could be feed stations, rest stops, etc. It might just be yourself marking some waypoints for turns on a route or a track and you just want to see where they are with relation to your track and route that you're navigating on. So what we're going to do in part one of this video is show you how using Garmin's Basecamp software with a track that I've already got here in the software, I can mark some checkpoints, some feed stations. I'll be taking them from the organizers, details that I've got in front of me as waypoints. I'll then send this track and the waypoints to my GPS unit. And then in part two of the video, we'll show you the active route setting. I'm just gonna use a really simple tool, which is a flag tool within Basecamp software. If you've purchased your device from GPS training, you do get access to all our online training videos, where we've got lots more detailed videos on using Basecamp software and these type of features. I'm using a Windows computer today, but the principle is the same on a Mac. Even though the option on the GPS device is called Active Route. It does work on a track as well, as long as you drop your flags right on top of the track. So it'll be exactly the same if I had a route in front of me. So I've got this track selected. It's an event that I'm gonna do, and you can see where it starts. I've got this green line. I've just basically, by right-clicking on the track and saying open, changed the color to um, green, should I say? Oh, that's red there. Green, just so it was easier for me to see. I could put it as red, because no Normally the default colour is a light grey colour. So as I come along the route, I can see where the route's going and it's just a case of if you've got your guidebook in front of you where you want to mark points or it's an activity you're doing where they've told you where the checkpoints are going to be, we can simply mark them with a flag symbol. So the first one I know where I've got this car park here is going to be a checkpoint. So I'm going to go to my red flag here at the top new waypoint, select the flag. On a Mac, you still have the waypoint tool. It's just a gray flag. And just where we come into, um, into this car park, I'm just gonna click a flag, and I've now got a flag in the bottom left-hand window. It's just giving it a generic name taken from information off the map. So I'm actually gonna right-click on this and say open, and I'm just gonna change the name and call it, because um, it's a cork it challenge, so I've got a unique name, because if I try and call it checkpoint one, and then the next time I do the same thing in Basecamp software, it'll say that I've already got a checkpoint one within the software. So I'm gonna put CC for cork it challenge, because that's the name, um, actually I'll do CQC, that's cork it challenge, that's the name of the event that I'm doing, and then simply CP1 and then hit my enter button. If I did want to turn it into a proximity alarm, I have got this option called proximity where it will then alert if I put a distance in here. So I could put eight zero. I'm using feet in my units of measure. So if I then go space FT, just ignore when it tries to put miles in, keep pressing delete. I've now got a circle around that flag. So as I enter that area, I will get a proximity alert on my GPS as well. So I'm now going to close that box down and I'm just going to zoom out. Now I've still got the waypoint tool selected. So I always go to the hand tool just so I can move the map around again. And again, I can see from my guide that I've got another checkpoint. So I'm just going to find that on the map. It's the one much further down. Um, it's this bit here where it actually turns left. There's actually a checkpoint here. Again, I've just got a sheet of paper in front of me showing me a map and where the checkpoints are. So I'm gonna mark that one. I'll call this one checkpoint two. So again, I'm right clicking on the flag and saying open. In the flag symbols, I could actually change it to a different symbol. I'm gonna keep the uniform CQC just cause that's an abbreviation, an acronym for the event that I'm doing, CP2. 
sorry, CP2. I don't have to make it a proximity alarm for it to work in the active route. So I'll actually not make this one as a proximity alarm just to show that it will still show in the active route. I just won't get an alert on my GPS device, but I'll still be able to use this feature called active route to see how far away it is. And the last checkpoint I'm gonna mark, again, which I've got in my guidebook, is just gonna be this one along, um, so I'll just go a little bit further along. I'm in the wrong place. It's just this one here in a village um, that we actually go through. We've got one more checkpoint. So I'm just going to mark it and that'll be my last one. And then part two of the video will show you how we can view these and use a feature that often gets forgotten about um, called Active Route. So last one, again, I'll just keep the acronym the same. So I've got a unique name in the actual software. And we'll call this one checkpoint three. So it could be feed stations. It could be you saying there's a left-hand turn, a right-hand turn. Just something you want to find in the GPS device to know how far away it is. So I'll just hit my enter button, close that down. So I've now got my, and remember to go to the hand tool, sorry, so you haven't got the waypoint flag tool. Otherwise, you'll mark them when you don't want them marked. So I've got my three checkpoints marked now. It's got the three flags in the bottom left-hand window. And I've got Coca Challenge 2022. It's just one of our older routes that I'm going to send to my unit. So to send that to my unit, I normally go to the list file, the sheet of paper above. That means I'll send everything within that sheet of paper, within that list file called Coca Challenge that's within my folder. So if I right click on there, I've got the option send to. If you were using a Mac, you'd then get the box come up, the transfer box where you need to make sure you tick tracks. If it's a route, tick routes and also tick the option waypoints before you do the transfer. And then you select your GPS device on them, um, which should automatically come up on the Mac, your, your device you've got connected, um, whatever name it is. I'm using a GPS map 67. So you'd select the name of your GPS device on the Windows computer. I just scroll down to where I can see my GPS right at the bottom of this list and highlight internal storage always send to your internal storage select OK and that will send those now to my unit so what I'm going to do on the next video is turn on the unit and show you what it looks like with this new screen that um, we don't always use called Active Route. Just remember loads more videos on the online training course that you get as part of your package when you purchase from GPS Training or you can purchase from our GPS store support packages that include all of the more technical and in-depth videos. So now we're continuing on from the video where we sent some waypoints with the track to my GPS device to use as checkpoints using the active route feature. Just remember again, even though it's the terminology active route, whether it's a track or a route, as long as you've dropped those waypoint flags on top of the route or track, you can use the feature. I'm using a GPS Map 67i today. You will find this feature on many Garmin units. Just check in your main menu and look for the option Active Route. If you see Active Route there, you know you've got it as an option. If you've got something like a Montana 700 and you can't see Active Route listed in the main menu, just remember to select the option Add Page in your main menu and search for Active Route. On my GPS Map 67, normally Active Route was found in the main menu. If you couldn't see it in the main menu, you have got the option again, add page on a 67 unit, and then I can select applications and you would just look for active route and add it. What I've actually done on my unit is added it to the shortcut page ribbon. So when I use the page button, I can actually see active route here. The way that I did that was from the main menu, I selected set up, and then scroll down to the option menus because I want to change a menu, press enter. I went to page sequence and then edit page sequence. And then using the up or down buttons until you see add page, applications, and then I selected active route. I've already selected it, hence it's not there. And that was added to my page ribbon. So I'm just going to quit right back out of here. And then what I'm actually going to do, I'll just get the map screen up. I'm actually going to load that track that I sent to my unit. And then we'll show you how Active Route works. So I'm going to press my find button. And then I would select routes or tracks, depending on how I've sent it to my unit. We know this one is a track, so I'm going to select tracks. 
My unit shows the closest track to where I am with the satellite signal at the top of the screen. So this one starts just outside the building that I'm in, hence it is at the very top. So if I press enter, it'll then show me an overview on the screen of the track. I can actually see the flag symbols marked here with the word go. So I'll press enter to start my navigation. If I want to start recording on my 67, I've then got enter and start. It'll depend what unit you've got to start the recording, but I always like to start a recording. I can zoom in here. I can see where the pink line of the route is that I'm going to go on. It actually says start point. Now, if I press the page button or you go to your main menu, depending on what unit you've got, and I've got the active route screen. So what it's showing me is the start point is just 74 feet away. SWCP is another part of our business, Shepherd's Walks. I'd already marked a flag symbol and called it the car park earlier on, so that's why that's showing in the route. What's nice actually, with my topoactive European maps, it's showing me low and high points within the route. So you will see those, but if I keep scrolling down, I can see how far away that first checkpoint is. That'll move up the list as I go around the route, active navigation. So I can see checkpoint one, is 6.95 miles away. It's just telling me an off course. I'll just acknowledge that. And if I keep scrolling down, checkpoint two is eight miles away and checkpoint three is 11.33 miles away. So it's just a nice way to be able to see in a list how far you are away from any of these flags that you've marked as checkpoints. It could be left and right turns. Just remember to use a unique name. We just think it's a really useful tool and it often gets forgotten about that you've got this feature called active route and then I can just go back to my map, navigate around and at any time I want to see where I am, it would either be the main menu for active route or press the page button if you've set it up in the way I've showed and then you can just keep tabs on how far away checkpoints are in front of you by scrolling up and down the list. So hope you found this video useful on using the active route feature that you find on many Garmin units and thanks for watching.